three days left until the December 2019 SAT. And you guys are probably grinding it out and I want to give you guys a quick tip. When I was in high school, I took the SAT for the first time and got mid 500s on my math section. And it took me about 8 months to go from mid 500 to a perfect score of 800. Now that I think about it, it took me a really long time to raise my math score. And that's because I was making a critical mistake. And I wasn't even aware that I was making a mistake. If someone had pointed out this mistake and told me not to do that, I probably could have raised my score within like 4 months or 3 months. I mean, the point is, I could have raised my score a lot faster if I had known not to do that thing. And that mistake was looking at the answer key. It's gonna take me about five minutes to set the foundation in order for what I'm explaining to make sense to you and save you a whole lot of time. And if you can't focus for the next five minutes and have to go watch that next cat video, by all means, go do that. It's just gonna cost you a whole lot of time. In order for you to raise your SAT math score or just any section in general, what you need is these two things. First is you're gonna need some concepts, okay? And second, you're gonna need something called critical thinking. And I'm gonna explain what these two things are in a second. So what are these concepts? It's just basic understanding of just how math works, you know, like how to add exponents or how Pythagorean theorem works or how to find the area of a circle or volume of a cylinder. Just understanding how to find these things. That's going to be concept. And what is critical thinking? Critical thinking is your ability to twist the concepts around and apply to the question that you're given or combining multiple concepts. So in order for this to make more sense, let me give you a quick example. On the SAT, there's five levels of math questions. This is going to be difficulty one right here, and it's going to be difficulty five right here. And the only difference between one and five is that these questions, two, three, four, these questions have a layer of complexity to it. So two is going to have like a little bit of layer, three is going to have like a little bit more layer, and four is going to have a whole lot more layer, and five is just stacked with layers and layers and layers of what's known as complexities, okay? That's what makes these questions so hard. And whether you can solve these questions or not comes down to just one thing, and that is your ability to see through these complexities and get to the answer, okay? So what are all these complexities made out of? Well, it's either that they have twisted the concept around or they're requiring you to use multiple concepts in a single question. So for example, difficulty, uh, difficulty one question requires you to use just one concept, but let's say difficulty five question is gonna require you to use multiple concepts. Maybe it's gonna require, it's gonna be a question with a mix of exponents, circles, trigonometry, and volume, or things like that. As questions get more complicated, you're gonna need more than one concept to solve that exact question. But what do I mean by twisting? Well, let me give you a quick example. We're gonna talk about an example with exponents, okay? Now let's say difficulty one looks something like this. The question asks you to find out exactly what 2 to the 2nd times 2 to the 3rd is equal to. And 2 to the 2nd times 2 to the 3rd is actually really simple. Same base, and you're multiplying, which means you're adding the exponents. That means your answer is going to be 2 to the 5th, okay? This question is just testing the concept because this is a difficulty level 1 question. And the concept that we used was adding exponents, right? Now, let's, let me give you an example of a difficulty 3 question. The question tells us that 2 to the x plus 1 is equal to 7, and it's asking us to find out what 2 to the x is equal to. Now, a big chunk of students are going to be stuck on this question. They're not going to know exactly what to do. They might try to add some stuff in there, like plug in a number for x. I don't know. But this question is also based on the same concept, which is adding exponents. If you think about it, 2 to the x plus 1 is exactly the same thing as 2 to the x times 2 to the 1. That's what gives you 2 to the x plus 1, right? So this side and this side, they are the exact same thing, which means we can replace this thing right here with 2 to the x plus 1, which means 2 to the x plus times 2 to the 1 is going to be equal to 7. And how do we find 2 to the x? We just isolate 2 to the x by dividing 2, divided by 2, that gives you 2 to the x is equal to 7 over 2, and that's going to be your answer, right? Now, if that just didn't make any sense, don't worry, there's going to be a link to a exponent lecture down below in the description box, but let's finish this video first. Now, was the second question a little bit harder than the first one? Yes, but did it use anything different from the first question? No, they used the exact same concept, and that was just adding the exponents. Addition of exponents, addition of exponents, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is that the first version required you to go this way, and second version required you to go that way. And what we're so used to seeing is going from left side to right side, and we're not familiar with going from right side, right side to left side. Even though we're only taught to go this way, you should be able to think backward and know how to do it left and right, right and left, you should know how to do it both ways. So long story short, if you know the concepts, you're going to be able to solve the easy questions. 
But if you only know the concepts and if you like the critical thinking, you won't be able to solve these hard questions. But let's go back to the main point of this video and that is why should you look at the answer key? That's because looking at the answer key prevents your critical thinking from growing, okay? In order for you to solve these questions by looking through the layers of complexity, you're gonna need critical thinking and looking at the answer key prevents you from growing your critical thinking. Let me explain that. What most people do when they get stuck on a question is they just go straight to the answer key. So maybe they'll, they'll try for like 30 seconds, but let's say after 30 seconds, you still can't get the answer. Then what you do is you go back to the answer key and the explanations, right? And that's exactly what I did too. And what these things do is that they simplify the complexities. And because they have simplified the complexities, the question now becomes super simple. And after you see the explanation, the question is going to seem really simple. You're going to be like, whoa, this is such a simple question. Next time I see something like this, I'm going to know exactly what to do. But the problem is that exact question is never coming up again on the actual SAT. And whenever you see something similar, you're going to face the same situation. You're not going to know how to solve that question. The reason you were able to look at the explanation and understand how to solve the question was because it simplified the complexities. Whether you can solve these difficult questions or not on the actual SAT really depends on your ability to simplify these complexities. Your ability to see through these complexities and get to the answer. And the key word here is your own, your own ability to look through these complexities. In order for you to really raise your SAT score, you're going to need to improve your ability to see through these complexities and you can do that by improving your critical thinking. And that's the exact mistake I made when I was in high school. When I'm doing the practice exams and when I look at the solutions, I was able to solve every single one of these questions. But on the actual SAT or any of these practice exams that I take for the first time, I can't solve these hard questions. I can solve the easy ones because, I mean, they're, they're out there. As long as you know the concepts, you're set. But these hard questions, they require critical thinking. And you can't improve your critical thinking if you're constantly relying on the answer key and explanations. And you might be thinking, how can I grow my critical thinking? It's actually pretty simple. Well, it's, it's not simple, it sucks, it's gonna be painful, but it's actually really simple. There's only one thing you have to do, and that is force yourself to solve the question. Next time you're stuck on the question, literally just sit there, stare at the question for 10 to 15 minutes and try to come up with the answer. There's going to be a big urge inside of you to just go flip through the back of the book and look at the answer key and look at the explanation and go move on to the next exam. But that's the last thing you wanna do. Literally sit there for 10 to 15 minutes thinking about how can I solve this question? Maybe try this way, maybe try that way, maybe try this way. You can fail and it's okay, that's normal. That's part of the learning process. And if you still don't get it, sleep on it. Take a nap, go to sleep, wake up the next day and look at the question again and try for 10 to 15 more minutes. And repeat the process two, three times and if you still can't get the answer, that's when you go back to the answer key and look at the explanation. But I personally guarantee you that if you do that two, three times, there's not a single question that you can't get. If there's a question that you can't get, it's because you were you are shaky on concepts. And if you're shaky on concepts, you need to go back to the concepts and study the concepts and master the concepts before you do any more practice exams. And this is not some wishy-washy theory that I just came up with. This is exactly what I do in my tutoring sessions. When a student is stuck on a question that they are capable of solving, I literally just sit there with them and just wait for 15, 20, 30 minutes to an end until they get the answer. And so many of them ask me like, John, can you just please tell me what to do? I, I, I don't know how to solve this question. I'll never come up with the solution to this question. And I don't tell them anything because if I do, their critical thinking is not going up. And if their critical thinking is not going up, next time they see a similar question on the actual SAT, they're gonna miss that exact same question. However, if they get the question on their own, that means their critical thinking is going up, which means they can solve the question on the actual SAT, which means their SAT score is gonna go up. And after about 10 to 15 minutes, they get the answer. Guys, I can already kind of sense that most of you guys are like, oh, whatever, this is another BS video. I'm, I'm not gonna try this, but there will be certain people, there will be few people that actually try this method and they're going to be the ones that see the result out of it. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Guys, you might have thought that I was yelling at you and screaming at you. Maybe a couple of, guys, a couple of you guys got upset, but guys, I was doing it because I was so passionate about this. This is such a big mistake. It cost me eight months in my high school life. If I had known this and cut the time into four months, that's additional four months I can spend on other sections and raise my score even more and maximize my potential even more. Maybe I could have gone to a better school, but it's too late for me now. So, so pretend that I'm like a future version of you warning you on a possible mistake that you could be making. So to summarize today's video, guys, you need two things to raise your SAT score. First thing is concept, and second thing is critical thinking. And you don't wanna look at the answer key because look at the answer key prevents your critical thinking from improving. Listen guys, there's only three days left. Let's grind this out, get the score you want on December 2019 SAT. And as always, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and if there's anything I can help you with, leave it in the comment box down below and I'll make sure I answer it. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.